Welcome back inside Gillette Stadium, everybody. My name is Mike Petralia, joined as always by Patriots expert columnist for WEEI.com, Christopher Price. Well, Chris, I don't think anybody doubted that the fact that the Patriots had a chance to win this game, but 43-21 over the team that most people have going to the AFC Championship and back to the Super Bowl, the Denver Broncos led by Peyton Manning. I don't think many people saw the dominance that the Patriots put on display here Sunday afternoon. The word you used was appropriate here, dominance on both sides of the ball. The Patriots used a 24-point burst there in the second quarter, something that they become quite good at getting up mm -hmm. on teams in the second quarter and really putting them away. I, I thought it was particularly dominant on special teams. I know that that was one of the areas where people didn't pay a lot of attention to this matchup going into this game. The Patriots were able to get that big punt return from Julian Edelman. They were able to get three field goals from Steven Guskowski, and they were able to uh, convert when they needed to on special teams. But, but the story of the game, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning once again coming up small on the big stage here in Foxborough, 438 of the most meaningless yards, I think, in Absolutely. the history of the NFL. Yeah, and why is that? I mean, the, I think the Patriots, you knew coming in, and I wrote about this on Saturday with uh, Dante Hightower, you're, they were going to play man-to-man. -man. They were going to play physical at the line of scrimmage. Uh, Peyton Manning uh, said earlier in the week that that's exactly what he expected from the Patriots, but still there were very few gaps in that Patriot defense. Uh, Manning, as you said, did complete some passes downfield and racked up some pretty meaningless numbers, but why was Peyton Manning unable to solve the Patriot defense throughout? I think a couple different things were at play here. First of all, the Patriots turned them into a one-dimensional team that had to throw the ball. There really wasn't much running of the ball on either side tonight. But I think when you look at what the Broncos needed to do, I think the Broncos needed to play a little bit more of a complimentary game. Last year they came in here, they almost ran for 300 yards. It's a different story tonight. They, they really couldn't get anything on track on the ground. They had to throw the ball to get back in the game. And by the time you know the, the second half rolled around, they, I think they cut it to 13 at one point. But they never got any closer than that. So they had to throw the ball in the second half to just keep pace with the Patriots. The Patriots played very good complimentary football. Every time Denver scored, every time it looked like Denver might be gaining some sort of offensive rhythm, the Patriots were able to do a very good job answering them. The other thing, to your point, the Patriots played great physical football. That secondary did a great yeah. job. We talked to both Brandon Browner and Darrell Revis in the locker room. They talked about that being a real point of emphasis this week, getting up on those receivers, jamming them, disrupting their timing. And I think the Patriots secondary did a tremendous job when it came to getting physical with those guys. Best job, I thought, was against Julius Thomas. I thought Julius Thomas was the real X factor coming into this game because I don't know, I didn't know beforehand if the Patriots had a real answer for them, uh, for, for the big tight end. And right. I think they did a great job with Brandon Browner, a variety of defenders going up against him, really kind of getting them out of their rhythm. Well, I, I think a player that went very unheralded on Sunday or will be unheralded is Patrick Chung. He has come back to New England and really found his role. Why the second time around does Patrick Chung, who made several big plays, including breaking up a couple of potential uh, would-be touchdowns uh, from Peyton Manning uh, to a number of different receivers, why has he been so successful the second time around? I think he's being put in a position where he can succeed. I think the rest of that secondary around him is very well set. They're, they're, they're very well entrenched. They're very established. But you look at one corner, you look at the other corner, you got Revis and Brown, or you have Arrington doing a tremendous job in the slot. You have Devin McCourty doing a very good job playing that center fielder's role. Patrick Chung has a very specific job, and I think he's doing a very good job of hitting those expectations at this point, being physical at the line of scrimmage, knocking guys off those routes, and not being asked to do too much. I think one of the things when he was here before, I think the expectations might have been a little bit unrealistic. Mm -hmm. Second time around, he's really able to hit that target consistently over the course of the first eight, nine games of the season. Another player that Bill Belichick gave credit to uh, in his postgame comments, linebacker, Dante Hightower. We mentioned earlier the kind of role that he would play uh, being physical with, with the Denver Broncos. Well, it was uh, you know, Dante Hightower that Belichick thought really was a big influence in that uh, defensive scheme against Peyton Manning on Sunday. It, I, I think he goes down as, as one of the big stars of this team going forward defensively if the Patriots can keep things together. It's fascinating to see his overall evolution as a football player from this point last year to this point this year. I, because I think he went through some growing pains last year. By his own admission, he struggled. Remember, he was benched the entire second half of the Denver game last year. He didn't see any time at all down the stretch. Today, he was a man in command of that defense. Bill talked about the fact that he was really that quarterback of the defense. He was the one who was in charge of getting guys lined up. He was in charge of making the plays. He was in charge of making the calls. He did a tremendous job, not only when it came to establishing a physical presence, but being a leader and being the man in command on that defense. I think Dante Hightower has really arrived. He's taken his game to the next level after Gerard Mayo went down. All right, we may be burying the lead a little bit here, Chris. Let's get on to the offense. 
They did put up 50, 43 points. They came within a touchdown of having 50 points in back-to-back -back games for the first time in franchise history. That didn't happen, but Rob Gronkowski is on a streak, a five-game stretch that we've never seen before. And we've seen some great stretches of football from Gronk. But this really is going down uh, in history as one of the best we've seen from Gronk. And Tom Brady is setting him up left and right. Gronkowski made one of the best catches you will ever see, not only from a tight end, but any receiver ever when he uh, made that one-handed grab near the uh, end zone. Actually was ruled down at the one-yard line. Very next play, almost as if they were rewarding Gronk for that <laughs> catch, as well they should. They throw to him for the touchdown. Two things stick out to me uh, about the offense. Uh, first of all, it's Gronk. I think so much of this is the fact that he's healthy. We've talked this, about this before, but Brandon LaFell has said on a couple of occasions, we're a completely different team with a healthy Rob Gronkowski. They've shown it really over the last three, four, five weeks. I think Gronkowski brings a different element to this game that cannot be matched by anyone, or very few people across the league. He's a dynamic offensive presence who can really do a lot of things. I, I think the second thing is the offensive line is playing better. Very, and, and, and very I think much so. For all the slings and arrows that group took at the start of the season, Brady has only been sacked, and, and I know it's a little bit unfair to measure sacks as the ultimate sign right. of protection, but, but Brady has only been sacked once over the last two games. I, I think that he's done. they've done a tremendous job. We didn't see any of the tackle rotation today. That's one of the, the things I thought was interesting. Mm -hmm. They stuck with the same five guys from start to finish, and I thought they did a great job. Uh, you look at the grouping, you know, we, we talk about this as well. Gronkowski, for all his talents as a pass catcher, sometimes gets sold short a little bit as a blocker. He was in there as well. So those two things for me are the biggest difference when you're talking about the Patriots offense now as opposed to the Patriots offense over the first four games of the season. And Tom Brady in the pocket, to your point, Chris, looks so much better now. He looks more comfortable. He doesn't see those so-called ghosts coming at him because he trusts the interior line. I think ever since, actually, believe it or not, the Kansas City blowout, the interior line has played much better, giving him the ability uh, to dance around in the pocket, wait for receiver, wait for that extra half a second to second for receivers to get open downfield. So much of his success as a passer is tied up in being able to step forward, step into those right. passes. And you're seeing the work of Brian Stork, who is healthy now. Uh, Dan Conley, who I still think has been the best and most consistent offensive lineman this team has had over the course of the year. And Ryan Wendell at the other guard, who I think now is a better fit as a guard as opposed to a center. So the interior of that line, the guards and the centers, are being able to really doing a good job at keeping Tom Brady clean, allowing him to step into those throws and to finish those throws off. I don't know about you, Chris, but I think Tom Brady today passed... Uh, DeMarco Murray as the leading MVP candidate in the National Football League, even better than Peyton Manning. Uh, people are going to say we're overreacting, but that's what we do on one-game samples, one-game snapshots. Tom Brady now, 18 touchdowns, one interception over his last five games. He is playing better than any quarterback in the National Football League. I think it's also worth mentioning, too, that he loves seeing a Jack Del Rio defense. Uh, Jack Del Rio, he's 8-1 now in his career against a Jack Del Rio defense. The only loss he's taken was last year in the AFC Championship game, so we'll say we can a mulligan for that. And then when you're talking about the AFC race, you put Brady in there, you put DeMarco Murray in there, you put Andrew Luck in there. You also have to think about Phillip Rivers, who really struggled today down in Miami against the Dolphins. So all those guys figure into that conversation. But right now, over the course of the last five games, I don't know who is playing better than Brady. So it's going to be an interesting debate if he keeps playing like this going forward. That's what we get paid big bucks exactly, to do, Exactly, the big bucks. Uh, obviously now uh, people are going to say, you know, what does this mean long term for the Patriots? Peyton Manning, we should also mention, is now two and eight lifetime in Foxborough, and he is now 5-11 and 11 in matchups against Tom Brady. Tom Brady now having the upper hand in 11 of their 16 meetings. This was, of course, Brady Bowl 16. Okay, big picture, Chris. Going forward, what does it mean as the Patriots are 7-2, and two, five straight wins heading into the bike? into the bye. What will be some of the uh, themes we hear out of Foxborough in the next couple of days as they get ready to go on their bye? Steady as she goes. Get your rest and kind of get away from the game for a couple of days, but don't get completely mentally unplugged so much so that you're not ready to come back and face the Colts on the other side of the bye. This That's team, a very fine line. Exactly, it is. It's a very fine line. You want to get away. You want to kind of make sure you get your, your work in. You want, to, you, want, you want to kind of you know step away from the game a little bit. Get a little perspective. Heal up uh, so you're ready for these next four games going forward uh, against the Colts, against the Packers, uh, the Lions, the Lions as and well, Chargers. and Chargers. That's, that's a really good stretch. We've hit on that several times over the course of the year. We're going to know a lot about this team once they finish that stretch, the stretch that really started last week against the Bears. They get through this at 4-2, and two, even 5-1 and one at this point. 
you got to feel pretty good about where they are when you're talking about positional seating when the postseason rolls around. Okay, the lights are going out here at Gillette, uh, needless to say. Tom Brady and the Patriots played lights out football against Peyton Manning and the Denver Broncos. As a result, the Patriots now hold the best mark in the AFC at 7-2 and two and obviously hold the tiebreaker. Uh, Bill Belichick was asked uh, if he thinks he'll see Peyton Manning and the Denver Broncos again uh, in January, and he said, I think there's a good chance we'll see Indianapolis in a week and a half. We'll leave you with that. <laughs> As the Patriots wrap it up here, and their fifth straight victory, and beat up on Peyton Manning and the Denver Broncos by a score of 43-21. to 21. For Christopher Price, I'm Mike Petralia. We'll see you on the other side of the bye inside Gillette Stadium, weei.com.